Hello everyone. Uh, hope you are doing well. Uh, okay, so uh, welcome, welcome to my stream. Uh, it is called Think Like an International Master. I am International Master from Poland, Matt Bobula, and I have got a short announcement for you uh, just for the for the start, because I'm going to change the form of the of my stream just a little bit. Uh, hello, ZB. Uh, at the beginning of every stream, I'm planning to stream twice a week. At the beginning of every stream, I will make a short lesson, right? For a couple minutes, I want to explain you, you know, the concept or an idea. And um, yeah, so I want you to learn something. And later, I will go and play some uh, some games and uh, analyze them and try to explain you some more ideas. Uh, and also, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Uh, publish those lessons on my YouTube channel so you can uh, not only because it is it goes live on Twitch but I'm also gonna publish them on on YouTube channel so you can watch it watch them uh, yeah wherever you want okay so let's 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 start uh, so let's start from the with the today's topic right so today we are going to talk about something that is called an in-between move or another name it's uh, I think it's in German. I'm pretty sure I do not pronounce it well, but uh, let me explain what is that. You see, it's like if instead of playing the most obvious move, uh, player is playing something like, you know, in between, right? Usually this move is like a check, capture or a threat. Usually it's one of those. So opponent has to do something and you go back, you go back. Uh, you, you see, this is move unexpected move that happens in between and usually it creates a big damage and today i'm gonna exp i'm gonna show you a couple examples and um yeah uh, one thing that i saw some statistics that in between move this is the main reason why grandmasters are losing of course not very simple in between moves but it's very easy to miss in between moves uh, you know when you're calculating the line right you go for the according to the line and it's very hard to see in between move let's say after three or four moves so this is this is why this is the main reason so let's talk i prepared three positions that i'm gonna talk uh, about it let's take a look at the first one okay what can you tell me about this position uh, of course black is up on the material black is up a rook you can see that bishop is attacking it here right at the moment uh, but um, yeah, but black is black is up a couple points. Uh, of course, it's not a good idea to take it immediately because that queen is hanging as well, right? So that's that. That's the problem. Uh, of course, like the most logical move that I, I mean, you know, my first impression was that white can take it here. Of course, king takes back, and now bishop takes the rook at a8, and now we go into the end game. Uh, this is, of course, bishop's endgame. Uh, white is up one point, so, and white has got a big advantage, right? White has got the pass pawn that is very important. Uh, white has got, like, here is pawn majority two against one, so there is a big chance that white will win this position. But there is something much better. White can use an in-between move and uh, get even better position. So that in-between move is queen takes h6. And why is that an in-between move? Because that move creates a threat. That move creates a very powerful threat that black cannot completely ignore. So, because there is a threat that bishop will take at the g5. So, take a look. So, in case that black moves the rook that is hanging, white can just simply go there. And I think, you know, bishop is attacking here. That bishop is attacking there. Queen is controlling that square. So, in, in, in this is like uh, a checkmate. Right? Or, okay, black goes here and next move, uh, queen takes and we have got a checkmate here. So this is like a queen takes h6. White can get even more material using that in-between move. So, okay, so black usually goes, I don't know, bishop d7, for example. So now there is a safe square at e8 for the king. Uh, white takes it. And, and anyway, I think even with a, with a queen, king, it's a check, king has to go back. And now white takes the rook. And you can see the difference. White, white is up three points at the moment. So this is, this is the difference. And uh, white's position is much easier to win. Even if, if, if queens 
uh, will be you know, exchanged, white has got two extra pass pawns on this side. So in between move makes uh, that position to win much easier. Okay, let's take a look at another position. Uh, take, a, take a quick look what happens on the board right now. You can see that this is position from the opening or early opening. That king is, looks to be a little bit misplaced, uh, but the, I think I'm pretty sure that the last move was that white bishop from f4 captured the knight at the at the b8. I'm pretty sure that that was that was the last move. And take a look. What happens in case that rook captures that bishop? This is probably not a good move because white goes queen a4. You can see it's a fork, right? Uh, black has to block it by playing let's say b5 and white takes here and you can see uh, yeah white takes here and you can see that white is up on the material uh, two points right white is up white has got three minor pieces black has got only two minor pieces so so you can see that black is um, yeah black is black is not in a very good position so the question is how black can use an in-between move to get the advantage Right? This is not very easy, hello Shahova, but the best move for black is to go knight d5. And why is that in between move? Because take a look. First of all, knight is protecting bishop, so queen a4 is no longer a threat. Second thing, knight threats to go to e3, and you can see that there is a fork. Right? There is gonna be a fork, and of course, all the time that bishop is hanging. And Okay, so what white can do? White cannot move, if white moves bishop back, knight goes to e3, fork, black wins, right? So so black black wins here. Uh, in case that bishop goes to f4, this is, that, this is also like a, a move that is possible, and it's a trap, because knight cannot take that bishop here, because if knight takes it here, this is coming, and it's a fork, and white is fine again. So black, but black can, I think, probably play queen f6, and that bishop is uh, is gone. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't know what happens with those with those colors. I'm just using that that new tool uh, that is called the the, the classroom. But uh, okay, queen f6 help you. You see that, and in case white protects it, let's say by playing with a pawn, there is still knight e3 fork because here bishop is pinned. So in this case, white most probably has to move the king somewhere and black takes uh, black takes at the moment that rook, uh, that bishop by the rook and you can see that uh, yeah, black has got the advantage. Black is up on the material. That king at the f2 is completely misplaced. So in between move. In this case, it wasn't check or capture. That is very popular, but it was a threat. But that knight uh, yeah, that knight was was that was a very very strong move, not very obvious, but yeah. Okay, and let's take a look at one more position. Now, my favorite opening from the French defense. Um, uh, yeah, today in between move and 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 later I'm gonna after that position actually I'm gonna um, play and and analyze some games. So take a look. This is my favorite opening, French, most probably, you can see typical structure for the French defense. You can see that there is bad bishop at d7, so that bad French bishop. Okay, so what are the options? What's going on, at, on, uh, what's going on, on the board? You can see that white is up on the material. Probably last move that white played was bishop takes bishop at b4. This is, I'm pretty sure this is the last move that happened right now. And of course, queen can take it like this with a check but in this case there is queen d2 and what can i play black is down right black sacrificed a minor piece for two pawns so black really doesn't want to exchange pieces at the moment so black goes let's say queen c5 and white goes you know white white plays king e2 or something uh, later white will try to probably remove that knight and i have to say that white's position is better no doubt about this right that white's position is better at the moment so let me go back so how the question is how black can use that famous in between move right now and the answer is rook c1 take a look it's a check so white king has to go to d2 there is no other way 
rook takes f1, of course, queen has to take it. And now queen takes it here. And you can see now there is a big difference. That king is completely open here in the center. And black later can make a very strong attack on this. And now take a look. Let's say let's say that white stops it with the with the with the knight. Black continues the attack. Right? You can see that black's initiative is much bigger, and after this move, I think it is not possible to protect that knight in case that queen goes to d3, queen captures a1. So you can see that rook c1 was a very, very strong move uh, at the moment. Uh, we can also analyze what happens if white doesn't stop it with the knight. But let's imagine white goes here. But I think that black can bring another piece into the attack. Uh, and, and black's attack is very, very strong. Right? Of course, of course, in case that bishop captures, uh, queen I think captures. Okay, take a look. That king king cannot go there. King has to go back. I don't know, queen b2, for example, and you can get d rook right now at the moment. So you can see it's a very, very... Uh, if you can use in-between moves, this is a very powerful uh, weapon, right, that you can use. Also, it's quite easy for your opponent to miss them. So this is, this is why it's very important to... Uh, to understand them. So remember, usually in between moves are when position is very dynamic, and if in, in between moves is usually check, capture, or threat. One of those three, uh, three moves. Uh, okay, okay. So that was that was like a short lesson on in between move. I hope you understand it that concept better. So now let's go and let's maybe play some games with the maybe with the with the explanation. Okay, I will try to find the opponent for 10 minutes. Okay. And let's let's have a try. Okay, first opponent from from Ira. Okay, I, I usually play d5 right now. And e6 and c5. Okay, let's let's play it now. But you know what? Recently I made a post on blog about the Tartakover defense this is one of the lines in the in the queen's gambit so maybe i'm, I'm gonna play this i will try to follow uh, my recommendations from the article it's it's available on my blog uh, so i'm gonna play e6 this is like a very universal pattern that you can use it against you know a lot of a lot of openings so i can play tarash but today okay uh, because i i posted that blog po that blog so Let's go and let's try Tartakover. My plan is very simple. I'm protecting pawn at the d5, as you can see, and later, um, and later, I will try to develop. I will try to make a castle, so bishop e7 castle, and later Tartakover is with the fianchetto. And I can go knight d7, and later I can play c5. Okay, so here I play bishop e7. In case that white captures in the Tartakover, a good idea is to capture. e3. Usually white should develop that bishop first, because now that bishop has got a small problem right, where to develop. Okay, so I castle. Here, and I'm going to play b6, of course. This is this is this is my plan. Later bishop goes to b7, knight d7. And this is what I'm trying to do. And I will try to attack the center by playing uh, the, the c5 move. Okay, bishop goes to b7. Yeah. That bishop is a small problem. I know that usually white can go b3, bishop b2, but that bishop would be definitely stronger if white plays bishop g5 uh, before playing. Um, yeah, before before playing there. And you see, you need to know that there are like several different options at the moment. Uh, it's I mean several. There are two different options, and very often in the grandmasters games. You can see knight takes d5. 
not maybe in that specific position, but I think it's not gonna, it's not very bad at the moment. But what I recommend, because this is a simple pattern, always take it here with the pawn. So and later you still want to develop and you want to push the pawn forward to the to the c5. So I promised you that I, I'm gonna follow the the, the my recommend my recommendation here. Okay, b3. Yeah, what that bishop is going to do here? Okay. Okay, I continue my plan. Okay, and I'm going to play c5 in the next move. Okay. Black wants to focus in the center. I want to bring my rook to c8. Maybe another rook goes there. Very typical idea for black is to play knight e4. Okay, so now queen c2, but this is not a good place for the queen. I know it's attacking pawn here, but it has to be very careful because after rook c8, there might be some kind of you know an x-ray uh, pointing towards that that uh, that queen. My only concern is that after this move, bishop goes to f5. Should I be afraid of that or not? Uh, yeah, maybe just a little bit, but you know what? Just only a little bit, so I think I can follow my plan. Okay, pawn takes. Now, in the theory, I have got four pieces that can take it. I don't want to take it in the, with the rook. I never saw. I never saw this as a good idea. As a good idea, right? Rook takes c5. Taking with the bishop and the knight has got this kind of disadvantage that it's making that pawn an isolated pawn. And this is the reason why I'm gonna take it with this pawn. I have got two hanging pawns. Hanging pawns are pawns that two pawns with, with no pawns on the you know on the uh, files uh, near to them that are on the two open files. So those are like hanging pawns. Very common thing in the Tartakover variation. But so you see they can be weak if white can block them somehow, but they can be also very powerful if uh, if black can, you know, push them or, or, you know, play something that makes them very active. And you see, now I see one, one really nice opportunity, because take a look. Very often, black can push it forward. And now take a look why this move is very strong. First of all, it opens my bishop, so I can ruin opponent's castle. Second thing, opponent... After this move, if opponent, cap if opponent captures, I take at a free pawn takes. I take here with the pawn, and you can see that knight at this square is uh, is gone because it, that knight is gonna be pinned. So looks like uh, the d4 move is a good move, uh, but you know it's good to consider some alternatives or what white can do. Knight e2. I'm gonna de destroy opponent's castle. What else? Yeah, I think I think this is the right time for me to start some kind of attack. So let's go here. You can see this is move number 13 and black starts the attack, so yeah. And you know, black's position is also very, very healthy. I would say, ninety-four. Okay, I see. I see the point. I did not calculate this move. Uh, should I be afraid of that, or maybe not? Because take a look. What's the point? Of course, now I cannot take there. <coughs> and now I see. I have got two candidate moves at the moment. First candidate move is of course the, such a move. You know, you always should calculate. You know, captures. Another idea is to go there with the idea to go knight before. And also I tried to take this pawn. So let's calculate. Takes, takes, probably takes, queen takes, knight f6, queen goes to... The yeah, queen goes back somewhere. Yeah, I don't see any decent square. Let's say queen f4. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say that position is more or less equal. Uh, and 
after this move is it better opponent most probably gonna go there so i take it pawn takes there is a weak pawn and if after this move opponent takes i go there queen goes somewhere i take queen takes yeah i'm not sure can i take back material okay so let's just keep it simple hello nicola Let's just keep it simple. I'm just thinking, is there any D3 idea? But I think D3 doesn't work. Okay, and now you can see. This is very risky for white because of that. So what does white play? After queen of ah oh, queen of five, I forgot about that square. Now my pawn is under attack. Should I take it? I mean, I, should I take it? Should I push it forward? Is there any other move that I can play? Probably not. Mm, if I take rook takes, maybe then c4. To exchange it a little bit yeah it looks 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 quite nice it looks very equal but 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 i think it's nothing wrong with this but uh, if i go there takes takes pawn takes bishop goes there yeah i don't like complications g6 g6 might be an option as well because queen has to go let's say here but is there anything good for me because of that okay you know what i will just keep it simple and i play c4 if opponent takes i take back i take back with maybe rook c5 but that move only attacks queen if opponent takes i have to take it with my rook Yeah, maybe the idea is that if I take, takes, and now pawn at a7 is in trouble. Maybe that's the point. I wish I can go there, but unfortunately it's not possible. Yeah, also that bishop is kind of, I have got some doubts about that bishop. I don't want to go there because rook goes here. So what bishop before? Ah, I forgot. <laughs> I told you that that pawn is under attack. The opponent played there to attack my pawn, but I forgot about this. But is it such a big problem for me? I'm not afraid that opponent takes there because I take it here. Yeah, but opponent takes here. And now what can I do? Is there any back rank idea that I may try to use? I would have to remove that rook. But if I go there, rook goes to c1. Maybe knight g4. Or knight, knight d5, rook d3. Knight g4 looks quite active but what is good for me after that I can just simply move it there okay let's go that's my point opponent also cannot go rook e1 because my bishop is here So if opponent goes bishop d4, I go here. If rook takes, I queen b5. Ah, okay. <laughs> so the point is that after this move, takes queen takes, and then queen goes to f1 in the end. What can I do with that? 
takes here. You know what, let's increase some pressure. And now take a look after, if rook will go to a bad square, I don't know, d3 I think is a bad square. b3 is bad as well as I, as I know, because I think I can take, takes queen takes f2, that was my idea. But should I start with this, or if I go there, takes, takes, okay, nothing really happens. Uh, but if I take, takes, queen takes f2, is there a win or not? <laughs> you know what, let's let's have a try. I have got an idea. I see some kind of potential smart that's made. Yeah, I have got two minutes, so let's let's attack. Maybe it's gonna work. Takes, queen takes here, king goes there. How can I make a smart that's made? Maybe bishop c5. And I threat to check and play knight f2. Oh, but my, my knight's hanging. Uh, <laughs> so it's a problem. Yeah, so because if I take it here, if I go there, my knight is hanging. So I have to take it with my knight. And now, of course, if in case opponent takes, I go there and there should be a smart that's knight. King f1. Opponent doesn't want to allow me to do that. Uh, okay, this is hanging. Yeah, I'm down in exchange. So my attack wasn't maybe that brilliant. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, I have to do something with that knight because if there's no smart that's made, it's a pretty bad knight. Maybe I have to play h5 knight g4. Or rook goes there knight e4. If I were white, I would most probably go here. Queen h4. Okay, attacking my knight. Mm. Okay, I, I don't see anything else. Okay, and unfortunately, I think I'm down a piece at the moment. Yeah, la later I'm, I will check what 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 did I play wrong? Because <coughs> I expected something more from this attack. Okay, so I'm down. I have got nothing to lose. I will try to attack. Maybe rook e2. a5, rook e2, queen d4. Now probably that position is lost. Yeah, I'm, I played there to avoid any background checkmate. Yeah, servus cruci. No, but I, I even don't believe in that attack. Yeah, l later I will just take a look what was wrong uh, with, with my attack, because I really like my position right after the opening, and something something went wrong. I think maybe not even right after the opening, but okay, there will be time to analyze. Let's just, you know, I have to... <laughs> okay, opponent goes there. Yeah, I see, of course, the point. Ah, okay. I check, king goes here, and there is no check, and I cannot stop promotion. So I think the best thing I can do is just to resign. Okay, so yes, you can see I, I completely lost that game. So let's just let just let just take a look at this. Uh, let's just take a look at this game. So what 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 happened? 
Um, okay, let's let's start. Opening I think was pretty. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's let open, opening I think was pretty decent. Position was like this. C5. Okay, Queen C2, Rook C8. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just checking that with the engine, right? That that, that analyzes. Engine says it's 0 0.4 for for white. Takes takes position is 0 0.1, so it's more or less equal to rook e1. And after this move, okay, engine doesn't really like my d4 move. So maybe I just started my attack a little bit too early. And you see, I told you that I did, I missed 94, and this is the only move that saves white. But engine suggests at the moment to play rook e8. So you see, so so to bring even more pieces into the attack, right? So maybe that would be, I mean, probably that would be better. Maybe d4 was a little bit too, um, too early, right? At the, at the moment, as you can see, uh, yeah, maybe this is. And after, after this move, and she wants to play here, uh, and now e4 is can be also attacked by the by the rook. Yeah, I can also play bishop d6 to put my bishop into a better diagonal. Okay, so probably d4. But still, as I remember, after d4, my I, I, my position was quite fa quite good. Takes, 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 takes. Uh, knight f6. D takes e3 is better. Okay, so so maybe d takes e3 was slightly better. So d4 was a small inaccuracy, and now another inaccuracy when I played knight f6. It's not a very bad move, but such a such a line would be better. And white has got small advantage because I have got bad pawn structure at the moment. So the d4 move didn't give me that much, as much as I expected. And now pawn takes there. Rook takes, and now I played c4. Okay, engine says this is 0 0.4. So it's not, a, it's not a disaster, bishop d4. And right now, <laughs> I played bishop b4. If you remember, first thing I told you that my pawn's hanging, and I completely forgot about it. I completely forgot about that pawns hanging, so yeah, okay. So so of I, of course, I should play. Okay, engine wants to play even rook c7, or things like that, or or c takes b3 and later pawn to a5. Yeah, but bishop b4. So that was that was probably a mistake. Uh, pawn takes here, rook takes. No, but engine still says that this is equal. Queen c7 and black even has got the advantage. Queen b5. Knight g4. Okay, this is fine. <laughs> Rook b3. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the moment. Yeah, okay. I see I see, I had got two minutes. This is the moment that I made the I made a mistake. Okay. So because you see even engine says it's equal. And because if you remember I took that risk and I captured there because I wanted to capture that pawn and I wanted to get some um, smudders made, right? In the perfect world, that would be smudders made possible. But of course, my opponent didn't allow me to do that, and yeah, and I got I got actually not that much. So the thing is that engine suggests to move bishop to d6, which makes actually a lot of sense because now this is under attack, but also that pawn is under attack. And after this move, queen takes there. And now after this move, queen knight takes here. Is it really equal? Now, of course, I threat smothered's mate. You know what's uh, smothered's mate. But um, so opponent plays here. Takes, takes, and probably bishop e5. Pin. And funny thing, white cannot protect that knight. This is not possible, this is not possible. <laughs> okay, after this move, there is there is this move. Okay, uh, that line looks nice, but this is like a very, very, very computer line. But the fact is that queen takes a7. Okay, so here was the final blunder. And now position is lost. Yeah, I thought that I can capture with my queen, actually, but I forgot that my knight at g4 is hanging in the end. Because I, I really hoped that I can go bishop c5. I completely forgot about that thing. Because you see, if white plays you know, a random move, let's say a4, there is this very cute checkmate here. I would love to checkmate my opponent like this. Um, 
yeah that would be really nice but okay knight takes here yeah and now this is that position is completely lost it's like engine says plus five all the time yeah and i had got okay now it was just too late so um okay so i think it was a pretty interesting game uh especially especially position of the opening was quite good was quite dynamic but i made a mistake when i decided to sacrifice an exchange so my sacrifice was incorrect yeah okay it was just a just a blunder okay it happens so let's try to play another game okay so i play with black okay it's d4 okay uh what can i play i can play greenfeld i can play you know Oh, but you know it's a tarta covers day so let's play d5 and let's play the tarta cover let's celebrate my post on blog about the tarta cover so yeah okay bishop e7 i still want to follow my plan castling b6 here still it's gonna be the same okay castles i think e3 was a little bit too early i would say similar inaccuracy like 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 uh, first opponent let's play b6 my plan remains the same And now I want to go c5. Rook goes to c1. Okay. Let's stop for a second because you can see that center is very dynamic at this point. So what are my options? I can go rook to c8. Yeah, it's nothing wrong to bring more pieces. But usually if center is dynamic like this, uh, I would like to, you know, I would like to, you know, make a decision. And I think I usually take it this way. If I play white, it's this move. Why? Because if I take with the pawn, in case that knight takes, I have got a nice place for my knight at c5 or even at e5. I threat to those pieces. And in case that pawn takes, white, there is a chance that white will have got, you know, an isolated pawn or, or hanging pawn. So let's just take it like this. <coughs> pawn takes, okay. So now I'll be the one who is going to attack those... Um, hanging pawn so let's bring a d rook or isolated pawn let's just bring the rook it cannot be wrong that knight probably is not the best piece maybe a good idea for me would be to come to the c6 square Maybe such an idea and knight goes there, attacking that pawn. Because if you are fighting, I know that those are not hanging pawns, but if I take pawn takes, there's gonna be th th those are hanging pawns. A very common idea is to uh, attack one pawn and force that pawn to move forward, and another pawn is very weak. Okay, so maybe I take, takes, bishop a6, I'm attacking it here. Oh, but then there is queen a4, which is a quite a strong move. So how can I attack? Yeah, after this move, I'm a little bit afraid of that. But then I take. Okay, let's... Should I go there or not? Looks very passive. But okay, so this is one idea. Is there an alternative? If I take pawn takes. White has got more space. I can also consider moving like this, but I don't want to put my queen in front of the x-ray and rook e1 was a strong move okay i don't see anything else let's go here and let's see and yeah, my plan is to go to c6 take it maybe attack that pawn pawn takes i will go knight here so i'm i'm focusing in the center i also open the the d file right now
Okay, pawn takes. To be honest, I was waiting for such a move because now I think I can take it back with the, my knight if I'm not wrong. And there is an isolated pawn. And I'm gonna play against that isolated pawn. Hanging pawns are, you know, stronger than isolated pawns. Okay, here, but exchanges, pieces exchanges are good for me. And now, for example, if rook takes to c1, white has got knight takes e7 with a check, which is that in-between move or fish and suk, right? That we were discussing at the beginning, right? Because at the beginning I had got a couple minutes, you know, I explained what is an in-between move. So now I have to be very careful because I might end up being down on the material. So my like conclusion is that I have to take it here. That move doesn't allow my opponent to do that in-between move. If someone wants to learn more about this and you haven't seen the beginning of the stream so uh, yeah you can go back a couple minutes and you know check it okay if rook takes queen takes here later i'm planning to move my bishop to f6 knight goes to c6 that rook goes to d8 and that sounds like a plan i think attacking pawn at the, at the d4 also not only those pieces they are going to attack that isolated pawn but also my bishop indirectly is attacking that pawn because you know it's attacking the defender rook e5 okay rooks brief. probably white wants to make some kind of a strong rook lift but you know usually better position for the rook is like behind the um, like from the from the first or second attack the position from, from the first or second rank. Let just let just what happens if I go there? Rook goes here. I play g6. I think I'm fine. But if I go there, if bishop takes h7, takes rook h5, king g8, queen goes there. I have got g6. I think there is such a sacrifice. We call it Greek gift. But uh, I think there's no great gift at that position. So let's go here. But you know, I want I really wanted to check. Bishop F6, yeah, and and I will try to you know follow my plan. Okay, I think I can go g6. Yeah, that move I think doesn't work either, because what's that? I think that white hasn't got enough pieces. Bishop f6. Here, here. And I think I think white cannot stop me from, from taking this pawn. Knight e5. Of course, I think I'm not gonna take it like this because pawn takes and there is no isolated pawn anymore. So I cannot do that. Should I be afraid of move like here? King takes queen h5, king g7, knight g6. Yeah, maybe a little bit, right? Rook h7. It's kind of kind of like a this kind of attack. I have to be very careful. So okay, so if I of course I don't want to take it with the bishop because pawn takes and I have got very weak squares, which I would rather you know avoid having such a weak squares. Also that move we can sit here. So maybe if I take I play bishop g7 
there is no isolated pawn. Yeah, there's, there's no isolated pawn, that's true. But at least my king is safe, right? So, so now it's important decision. Get, you know, remove that isolated pawn from the board and, 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 uh, but my king is gonna be safe. Or try to, you know, attack that pawn, but yeah, I cannot go there, for example, because there are some annoying moves like here. You know what? I'm a safe player, so I will go here. I still might think that my position is better because you see that rook is misplaced. Queen g4. What's going on? Queen h4, probably. Can I go here, attacking that pawn? I have to counterplay a little bit. Checkmate, I can go h6 or h5. h5 looks like a more natural move. <laughs> and I expect this move. Okay, let me just uh, solve the problem with the sun. I'll be back soon. I think should be better. Maybe it's too dark at the moment, but uh, okay. Here, what's the point? Queen is protecting here, of course. Should I be afraid of move like that? Yeah, maybe. But it, maybe Bishop G6 pawn takes Queen. No, I think it doesn't work. So what can I do at this at this at this point? I can always exchange queens. Maybe I can bring my rook into the attack. It does make sense. Hmm. Maybe rook d8. I'm not really afraid of any sacrifice there, but Rook d8 or rook c8. Okay, honestly, I thought that uh, white's attacks were not gonna be as strong. You can see it's very, very annoying. Yeah, let's go here. Let's bring my rook. If there is no mate, I think it's a. Uh, and I really hope there's no mate. Yeah, I wish I can give some kind of a background checkmate, but it doesn't work. Also, there is bishop f1, so it's not gonna be that easy. But I'm just thinking, should I decide to exchange queens? As I feel usually more comfortable in, in, in endgames. But okay, what white's going to play? Rook takes h5, pawn takes, queen takes. No, nothing really happens. I'm good. Bishop takes g6, pawn takes, queen takes, queen f7. I think it's also good for me. can improve the attack maybe g4 but g4 looks very risky i think i can even take it queen takes i take it e5 takes takes bishop takes g6 takes queen takes g6 queen g7 and i'm good yeah but this is like a very deep line hmm <laughs> 
<laughs> g4 <laughs> okay i think i calculated this line so i think i can take it and now i think i can take it there if bishop takes g6 i take queen takes queen g7 do i miss any mate hopefully not queen goes there i think i can take it there and king goes to f8 because there is no mate yeah but there is you see my bishop is defending here so i think it was small blunder and now i can just escape with my king can i i think so Okay, it goes there. Yeah, nice to nice to nice to hear that, Adar. Okay, so what can I play? Yeah, maybe just simply bishop g7. And I think it ends the game. Yeah, if you if you if you want to sign up for the for the you know free 10 week course you can visit www.madbobula.com and yeah um okay let's 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 analyze that game uh let's analyze that game okay so quick analysis here yeah okay let's let's start especially i want to focus in one moment especially i want to focus okay because position here looks pretty pretty nice but i really want to focus on this position Okay, engine says, you know, it's 0 0.3, so more or less it's equal. Pawn takes here, pawn takes, okay. And now I played rook c8. Maybe, yeah, it's nothing wrong with rook c8, but maybe slightly better was to go knight e4 directly. Yeah, maybe that was that was the actuality, the move. So, okay, rook c8, rook e1, and now I played knight b8. Okay, because you see, I told you what's my plan. I... I plans to improve position of my knight try engine wants to play here here or here so i have to say that i like my idea more i like it more and now pawn takes and that was for sure a mistake in case but you see after this move knight takes uh yeah but later we are going to analyze what happens after this move but what 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 would happen if white doesn't take it let's say white plays h3 i think i can go can I go here or not? I think I can go there. Or even better, I can take it here first. Pawn takes and I can go there. But there is d5. It's a similar idea that happened in my game. I mean, I had got hanging pawns. So maybe knight c6. And white plays, let's say here, I go here. Yeah, okay, that position looks quite nice, I have to say. Yeah, nothing nothing wrong with this but let's go back to the game let's take a look and yeah, now position is more or less equal but white has got that weakness at the at the d4 which might be a problem knight c6 okay g6 bishop f6 yeah i think i uh it's all good and now knight takes c5 uh <laughs> okay engine is not afraid that much engine wants to play queen b7 Probably the idea is to um, make that battery on the diagonal, and it's a uh, yeah, probably that would be quite good. So, captures, but this is still and just still thinks that black has got the advantage. Okay, here now I played h5, queen g5 here, it's all good, and now g4 was a little bit too much, yeah, it was a little bit too much takes and i take there and this is win so actually i think i didn't make any significant mistake uh, yeah it was like a very very typical position i think white very typical game for the tarta cover i think whites uh white didn't play well by taking at the d5 that was the biggest mistake you know i put a lot of attention into my defense so i didn't want to i didn't and i i really tried to you know stop opponents attack so and i did so you know it's not a starter um, cover is a tarta cover is a pretty tarta cover defense is a pretty solid uh, thing okay so let's play one more 
Okay, this time I play white. I play d4. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I can always try to play Tarta cover with white. It's gonna be quite passive, but <laughs> okay, I usually don't play this. But as this is, you know, as today I'm just playing different Tarta cover ways, so let's play Tarta cover. This is very universal system. Honestly, I think this is the first time in my life that I play it with a, with a white color. Okay, now it goes there. I play here, you can see this exactly the same pattern. Okay, so I bring my rook. Yeah, I also want to probably play knight e5. Of course, now this is under attack, so maybe I'll play a safe move here. Later, I also kind of threaten the future to go b4. Okay, and now should I go b4 or not? Or should I play knight e5? Knight e5 leads into some exchanges. And I will end up with such a pawn at d5. Uh, yes, yes, that's that, that's true, right? Looks like, uh, yeah, especially if I go here. Looks like this call system. I can also play b4 and later attack here, even by playing c5 and here. This is also an, an, an but okay, you know what, I will play b4. And later I can decide. Opponent invites me to play this move. So let's accept my opponent's invitation. And let's go here. Ninety four. Okay, but take a look. Now for sure I can take it. Can I? Yes, I'm pretty sure I can take it. And now take a look. There is a very weak square. So my plan is to put my knight there. Opponent will go f5 for sure, because that pawn, no, okay, knight f6, doesn't really matter. And now, okay, can I attack that pawn with something else, or... No, you know what, let's just follow my plan. That My knight is really strong at the moment. It's really strong. Knight d5. Attacking that pawn. I can go there. Rook probably has to move, I take... Knight takes here. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, let's just let's just push my pawns, you know. I started to push those pawns forward, so let's just continue. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> funny thing. My opponent is trying to do similar story. Opponent thinks that this is like a very good square for the for the knight. Maybe it is. But I think I can easily remove that pawn that is supporting that. And now I think I can just take that pawn and I'm good. Yeah, I have got an impression that my opponent plays a little bit, a little bit too quickly. Pawn takes. Okay, now I can take with the pawn, which looks like a natural move, but I can also bring my queen. But you know what, let's take with the pawn. I like my, my pawns on the on the queen side. Knight d5. Hmm. So now how can I continue? This move looks looks quite decent. I'm up a pawn if I'm not wrong. Maybe I can go there. B6 I have got very strong pawn. I also tried to move bishop a3, activating my bishop. Yeah, that, that actually c6. I, I like that idea. Or I can start with bishop a3 to make some motif, so later I can decide uh, to play b6 or here. What is a better solution? If I go bishop a3, rook e8, c6. Yeah, I, I have to admit that I like everything. Uh, <laughs> in that position. I think that position is that good that any move would work. Let's play c6. Okay, b6, but now that pawn is a it's a real monster. And now I see that that pawn is also quite weak. So maybe just a good plan will be 
to double pieces on the A file and attack weak backwards pawn at the at A7. I think it's nothing wrong with attacking. Yeah, let's go here. That's where I see there is a motive that of kind of like a fork, but I keep my I keep an eye on that. If knight takes bishop takes and I can bring my rook, I can later even bring my queen. Yeah, other I usually accept challenges from from subscribers. Uh, okay, let's let's bring another another rook here. Okay, so what can I do? Uh, maybe to go there, rook f7, queen a2. Should I be afraid of any moves like a5? So if pawn takes, queen takes c6. So maybe to prevent that, I'll play rook a6 first. I didn't want to play this move at the beginning because knight goes there attacking the rook, but now there's no knight at the d5. Also, I think, <laughs> okay, of course, I see what opponent's trying to do. I think h3 is also not a very good move because there is a mate. So now I have to decide this move or f4. I think f4 maybe also stops this. So let's play here. <coughs> I want to go there. I want to play queen to c4, bishop to a3. Okay. Am I blind or it's a blunder? What happens if I just take it? Queen takes f4. And so what happens then? Let's calculate. Takes, queen takes. This is under attack, this is under attack. Is it such a scary thing? I can always take at e6, but then king h8. Maybe this is the move I should be afraid of. Okay, what, what should I play after queen takes f4? g3, queen takes d4, king g2, knight e3, king, okay, I think I'm good, I think I can win some material, yeah, I just don't believe, hopefully I'm not wrong, I just don't believe that queen and the knight can checkmate me. No checks. The only check is here, but you know there is no way to continue. And now there is also another nice move. Yeah, it's strong. It's this is very strong. Also, another thing. I'm not saying that this is the most important thing right now, but pawn at a7 and I can, you know, exchange rooks and I can also, yeah, that, that, that would look also quite strong. If I were black, I don't know, maybe black has to play moves like that, f4. And then I take, rook f7, I take there. Yeah, I just do not believe in any, any black's attack at the moment. I just don't believe that's, that's something. e5 maybe opponent is descending to me uh, so what rook takes a7 simple solution now i can also go Queen uh, rook d7 and to remove that queen out of that place. Yeah, this is I think first time I played that that kind of Tartakover right or or call system, right? Yeah, that that's true. It reminds 
call system. Oh, I think it's, you know, check is not enough. Maybe F4, but after F4, maybe I can. No, I cannot go there because of knight F2. I have to be careful. Rook goes there. What's the plan? Queen goes to c5. Maybe even knight a4. Maybe this move with two threats. Would it be good? Usually, if you can get the rook, it's good. So, okay, let's exchange and let's go. Okay, I will. Uh, let's go here, and I think my opponent best thing can do is to resign. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay. Let's just take a quick look. Let's just take a quick look what happened there. What happened in this game? Uh, one second. Just, just, just. I have got. I just wanna. I just wanna check. Engine still shows like white is better here. Uh, yeah, a little bit funny. That's true but c5 okay that plan actually was good knight e4 and now <laughs> even better instead of playing knight d2 which was not bad knight g5 and i think now might be quite hard for black but what happens if black takes ah, okay after this move i could go there so i was so focused on that square at the d6 that i completely forgot that i can just go you know that i can just simply go um and take that pawn from the from the e4 so that's the uh, that's that that's the point uh, let's just take a look at the at the uh, yeah i'm just checking analysis but was there any mistake no there was no mistake yeah okay okay let's let, let's play one more let's play one last game so I'm just very curious, can I play another Tartakover? Okay, and opponent from Poland. <laughs> let's do the same. Opponent pretty pretty strong, but let's try to play the same. So, okay. So it's gonna be Tartakover with white or call system, whatever you call it. Castling, you know, my plan remains exactly the same. My opponent plays King's Indian. Yeah, but I have got an impression that it's gonna be a King's Indian attack uh, right now. I mean, King's Indian attack, it's a King's Indian defense, but but very often I got exactly the same position in the French defense because I play French defense with black and just I will make a, one small, uh, I will play one thing differently uh, that I, I, I want to go knight c3. I really want to go knight c3 because after this move I keep that square for my knight. But this is the only exception against that king's Indian defense or, you know, king's Indian attack. But before I do that, I have to check, can I take? Pawn takes, knight takes. Knight takes, I take the queen. Rook takes, I take a t5. Can I win this pawn or not? Okay, one more time. I take, takes. If knight takes... It's even better for me because it's 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 clearly I win a pawn, but knight takes. I just want to check: is there any tactics? Opponent can pin it, or I don't know. I don't see knight e4. Is it such a big problem? I play knight d3. Let's 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 have a try. I don't know what's the. Ah, okay, <laughs> now I know. <laughs> now I know. I completely forgot that opponent can just pin it but uh, quite early okay so of course right now i'm not gonna go there because my bishop is in trouble so if i go here knight takes takes yeah we, it leads into some exchanges yeah i completely forgot about that thing mm, okay after this move 
takes or that knight takes takes knight takes or maybe knight c3 yeah let's go knight c3 okay i will take it maybe queen d2 queen g5 okay i'm not very scared of black's attack here i can always play f4 in the worst case my plan is to move my rook to d1 uh, later uh yeah like d5 maybe yeah okay maybe that taking the pawn at e5 wasn't like you know the brightest idea but uh yeah yeah, but I think that position that position reminds me Budapest Gambit. I don't know why, but 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 looks like a Budapest Gambit. Just a little bit like that. What opponent is going to do that move was also important because queen is protecting that piece here okay let's bring that rook my pawn at c4 is not hanging you see it's pretty well protected so i'm not afraid that i lose it a5 so opponent wants to push it forward After this move, of course, I take, but maybe I cannot play knight d5 because of the a4. If I go there, knight goes to g4. Should I play h3? And now black plays queen d7, I play f4, knight c6. I play what? e4. Hmm. Or I can start with e4. Oh, you know what? Let's play that h3 move. Because I need to play in a quite active way. So this is the reason why I always consider playing the f4 move. Knight d7. So opponent is afraid of that idea. If I go there, takes, takes. takes takes and later yeah I, I don't want to exchange my knight so maybe okay i wanted to make to draw an arrow and i played so <laughs> anyway so opponent really wants to go here i think this is not a blunder and there might be some kind of a potential threat at the f6 square so i think opponent has to take it and I'm gonna take it with my bishop. My bishop here looks pretty strong also. And in case that opponent goes there, such a move makes pawn at the d6 quite weak. play any moves like e4 because my bishop is gonna be trapped maybe i can somehow play it here trying to remove that knight maybe just queen d4 or maybe rook d4 yeah you see the idea is just to bring the another rook into the game is it such a great idea i don't know I'm trying to, I'm not sure what to do, so I'm trying to improve position of my pieces. And if there is any area that I will try to uh, that I can attack, I think it's the center. Because I'm not very convinced to, I can try to play b4, but, but I'm not very convinced to that plan. Attack on the king side. Yeah, I don't want to move my pawns forward, because it's going to make my king weaker. This is the reason why I will go here.
Okay, c6. So I was hoping for this move. So now I can attack that pawn. And maybe my opponent wants to go there, knight g5. Can I go here? Is, is it a blunder or not? I think I'm fine. One threat, another threat. So you see, this is like a very strategical position. Very strategical one. Ninety six. Okay. Of course, you can see that this is a problem. But I mean, I cannot take at a five because my rook is hanging. What happens if I take it here? Rook takes, queen takes, rook d eight. But it's protected. But yes. where where can I go? I have to go to. Yeah, good question. Queen a three. Exchange bishop takes and queen a1 i play queen d6 yeah i'm not so it's not super clear for me is it that good um but if i take rook takes takes maybe there is another square for me now you see to be honest i think it's too early for me to capture that so what happens if I go just simply here? Knight goes there, and then I take. Now my bishop at f3 is hanging. So I have to go bishop e2, knight e4. Hmm. This is a pretty annoying move. knights here maybe this move yeah but what's the point of that rook d3 knight g5 bishop e2 knight e4 queen e1 okay i don't see anything better so let's go here queen g5 protecting that pawn in case takes takes queen takes rook d8 but i think it's not as strong as for black as it was okay now i think i can take it you can see that it's protected now where can i go every single square here is blocked i can go to g3 should i go to g3 offer such a queen straight and we exchange i have got but i'm up a pawn but if i go there exchange exchange yeah that looks more solid yeah queen a3 definitely looks more solid so okay queen goes there and now i'm planning to go queen here i don't want my opponent to enter into that square at the at the at the d2 of course and now take a look it, this is yeah i have got the advantage for sure as you can see i'm up a pawn you can also see that i have got a bishop bishop usually in such positions is superior to the knight i go there to control that square also i want to play queen d1 so that should be win. That I think should be win. I mean, I have got the advantage, right? Still a long way for me to win because opponent will make some, try to create some problems. If I go there, queen c3 most probably. Or queen b2. 
no queen opponent cannot move queen here or here because i check and i go back to d4 and i exchange queens and of course if i can exchange queens without and my pawn structure is not gonna be ruined okay but this is what i was hoping for and now <laughs> okay let me think about it if i go there takes takes knight goes hit knight goes to e6 d5 i go d5 takes takes knight c5 is that win or not this is this is this is this is important question oh but you know what i don't like end games with queens so let's have a try i'm not 100 percent sure because i'm forced to play d5 pawn takes i'm forced to capture and now the problem is yes that opponent has got a king that can you know that can come pretty quickly but if i go here check king goes there knight goes to this place i go d6 yeah maybe maybe it's gonna end up in a in a draw actually we'll see hmm. so what but that knight is it trapped or kind of trapped so take a look if i i mean it's it can still go there if i go king f1 king f6 i play g3 knight takes but then the knight is misplaced and now i go bishop g2 knight g5 i play f4 knight is trapped let's have a try <laughs> maybe it's gonna it's gonna work okay g3 that, okay i don't have a time to calculate i have got like one and a half minute and if i go there here f4 knight is mine unless i'm completely blind <laughs> i think i can win this knight so maybe you see it was a good decision to go into into the end game okay and now of course what should i do uh, okay i have got not that much time so i will bring my king this is very important in every end game uh, maybe this move it stops any king before okay i don't want to exchange pawns you have got the advantage do not exchange pawns i mean avoid exchanges and now i will try to force that king to to step back and i can activate my king let's go there you see i have got unlimited moves and opponent has to make some cannot play with this pawn this pawn also it's not possible now pawns are on the light squares i was hoping for that uh so let's go here yeah i'm just waiting i'm just waiting at the moment i'm chasing you know i'm attacking some pawns and i will just wait in the end i'm gonna sacrifice bishop for the pass pawn i'm just waiting and now i can activate it's a tsukzvang you know at the beginning we were talking about this treason zug now it's a Zugzwang. yeah and now i can i can even move it there and i can get those pawns i have got one minute but you know one minute should be absolutely enough to win uh and let's go here let's just you know simply simple solutions and just take it and i'm pushing my pawn forward i told you that in the end i'm going to sacrifice my bishop for for that pawn there is even no need for that yeah and i think <laughs> okay i have to say i have to say that i'm quite proud uh, of the trap that i made let me just check it let me just check it with the engine because i'm just very curious was it correct or not because i think endgame was especially interesting here so queen c3 was it a good idea okay engine actually doesn't like my idea of moving queen to d8 as you can see because um because um yeah let's check why engine, engine prefers simply g3 but what's the point takes takes 
engine shows 0 0.5. D5, C takes takes, and not knight f4, but, but knight f4 is good as well for black. And now bishop goes to e4, f5 equal position. Yeah, okay, maybe f5, and after this move you see knight always has got that place, king can come here, and probably, you know, position is equal. But, you know, equal endgame doesn't mean that it's a draw, right? You can see after b6, king f1, and after this move, g3, and yeah, and knight h3 is a losing move because, you know, I can play bishop g2, f, f4 wins as well, right? But bishop g2, I'm, I'm quite proud of that trap. And now, yeah, okay, now, now it's gone, right? Black's position is completely lost. You just need to be a little bit accurate to, to yeah, to win this. You know what? I will play one more, one last game, but maybe three plus two. I know that I'll have to explain pretty quickly, but let's let let's let's play one more. Okay, three plus two. Okay, I'm twenty three hundred. Ifor is the only actually opening that I cannot use the Tarta cover, so yeah. So that the last game a little bit ruined my Tarta cover game Tarta cover day. Okay, but we have got advanced variation. I will use the very simple plan. This is the very simple plan how black can equalize. You don't need to learn many lines. It's just enough to capture and go bishop b5 and position the sequel. Yeah, I think I will go. Should I go queen b6 or maybe I should have capture actually at the at the no okay no need so now I go here I'm attacking pawn at the d4 of course I want to play here I want a castle that's my plan the most important idea in that in, in that opening is to put pressure on that on that thing but I think in this case I can also put some pressure over that thing at db4 because I think white cannot push it forward to b5 and this is correct I mean and now I think rook takes and that pawn is weak as well queen d3 so what should I bring yeah, maybe queen you know silent move what white is going to do with that g4 Okay, so white's trying to counterplay. Usually I would go there, but now maybe can I? I think I can just take it. If pawn takes, I take it here, and of course I want to exchange. I don't mind to exchange pieces when I'm up on the material. Without queens, there is no attack for that white can do. Okay, so this is why opponent is keeping queens, but I think that queen is not going to help him very much because now you can see, I can, I can, I can go here. Queen C, Queen C1 maybe is the best I see, but then I take it, and if Rook takes, I have got Rook takes to C1 of course, I have got Bishop D2. Two things are hanging. And I think I don't want to give it to my opponent that that pawn, so I will go here. Rook behind the pawn. This is like, this is the best place for the Rook because Rook can support it to move forward. And I think that pawn is still mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I was completely blind. My opponent was also blind. Okay, I had got some kind of blackout. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's 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 play a little bit. But I was so happy that Bishop D two is a good move. Okay, so now I have to complicate, make it hard for my opponent to win this.
<laughs> no, it's, it was just, you know, just a blackout. I don't know what happened. Okay, what can I do? Should I bring my king or or what? Yeah, let's attack. Maybe I can take it. Or knight goes there, here. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should exchange that knight, because my knight is quite useless at the, at the moment. But at least my king is active. Okay, let's go to the attack. Hello, programmer. Yeah, let's, let's try attack. Just a little bit. E4. I would love to exchange pawns. Yeah, I'm even not sure can I play this. You know, I'm just playing on that pin, but you see, if we can, if I can remove all pawns, rook against the rook and the knight against the rook, I have got a big chance for a draw. So this is what I'm trying to do. Um, I told you what am I trying to do. <laughs> I, I, ah, okay, here. So now at least I know why opponent exchanged it. Yeah, how can I get rid of that pawn? Might be hard. course without losing my rook <laughs> 50 seconds left Okay, looks like it's lost. King takes d6 and position is unfortunately lost at this point. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna resign. Okay, so <laughs> it was a pretty nice game. Just unfortunately, you know, blunder blunder happens, right? So that's the that's the point. Uh, okay, anyway, anyway, <laughs> I think that was my last game. Hope you you like. Uh, I really hope you like that that new format of the uh, of the of my stream, right? That that I start with some you know explanation. Uh, so 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 for those who didn't see that at the beginning, I explained what is that Swiss and soccer in between move for ten minutes, and later I played and explained some games. And today, I played four rapid games, and four rapid games were in the Tartakover system, right? Two with white, two with black. With white, I tried to do that in the first time. Right, so that's the that's the thing. So if you enjoy if you enjoy that 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 kind of my stream, please click follow. Also, um, yeah, please just please just click follow if if you like it. And now we are going to make a ride to Chesbrach. So please say hi to them. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time on Monday. Yeah, see you. Bye.